How are you? Welcome to episode 20 from the Arbiter stream. Apologies for the late start. Hello everybody, Prodromos Gerodopoulos is here, international arbiter and lecturer from Thessaloniki, Greece, and social worker, also a good friend, Mark Bryan, feed the arbiter from Cyprus. And do you want to introduce Mark our 20th episode? Yes, we're going to let the... Uh, let's do a sound check, does it... is my sound okay? Yes, very good. Perfect. So let's let the, our intro... So, as with today, we are doing an arbitrary decision audit, which is we're going to look at some uh, arbitrary cases that have taken place in the recent past and look at it uh, at what rules were broken from the players and how the players, how the arbiters reacted to this action. So, we have three cases today, two are uh, well published. The third one is uh, was was published on Facebook. Uh, it was sent to me by um, an arbiter friend of mine. It was sent to me, and he asked me what my opinion was towards this situation. So yeah, I've included it into our video. Yes. So let's start with the first case. The first case we're going to look at is mainly about opponent, distracting of the opponent. It's a very bizarre case because um, even I am still not 100% sure what actually happened. Despite trying to dig a lot of videos up, a lot of information, it's very hard to see actually what happened. So we're, of course we're talking about the King Gate between uh, Samuel Sevian and uh, Hans Niemann at the U.S. Chess Championship. So, we're going to move to our... Uh, we're going to watch the uh, two videos and we're going to comment on the video. So, let's start. Who will join the leader leaders group? Exactly. We, uh, we just saw this move F4 by Sam Sevian. <laughs> What's going on it, here? It I don't know. It looks like uh, they're a talking. Draw. Maybe a draw. They're uh, talking. Did they make what? a draw? Somehow they what? want to. They're discussing something. I hope they, they are discussing something. What's what, what? Okay, one minute. Let me check something. Yes. Yeah, I have was facing some small technical problem. One minute. Yes, I can find it on uh, YouTube, uh, Mark. This is the case. Okay.
Okay, uh, I can't stop it, otherwise I'll just end it. Um. Of course, I'm not on uh, line from uh, YouTube. I don't know why, it should have worked. I can't change the settings. Okay. Uh, I'll send you the recording because it's recording. Yes, okay. I'll send you the recording and we'll upload it later. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. Sorry. Are you on? Okay. I'm sorry. I don't know. It's so work today our tech we have a lot of issues today. <laughs> okay. Let's Okay, so let's continue. So basically we see here Yes. Sam Samuel Sevian take the king of Niman like, and then just giving uh, it back to him. They're talking. Draw. Maybe a draw? They're uh, talking. Did they or make what? a draw? This is article uh, want to they're discussing 12 something. 12.9. They the, are discussing something. There are what some are, something are about What's the role of the, the arbiter in, the in the uh, such situations. Uh, did he touch the king and right now... He, whoa, 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 whoa. As you can see uh, the video... Me, what, what just happened? Yes, F4? let's see. I, I see that Hans he is the game, He's trying took to about the say something? Perhaps black kings. Yes. The, the now that it's broken. No, yeah. there, there were no knights in this yes, position, this it was the pole. Sorry, the king, the king, the king, yes, the king, yes. Something yes. called the arbiter. Something happened. Yes. A new man uh, oh, you really touched different. your king. Claimed you for uh, disturbing. That's your king. But wait a second, I mean... I mean, that's not the Sa worst Sam is playing with touch. white, you know, his king yeah. is on h4. So I'm trying to understand. Still. No, they actually have the other with of the game. And uh, you mentioned with rook takes six. Yes, rook takes six. Like I started the to get moves of Hans. Here. Twelve point nine point <laughs> one. Okay, so yes. the 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 then, arbiter keeps starting the clock. The players keep stopping the, the clock. The Something clock again. Confusing. Yes, really don't know what happened. But normally you have to stop your clock and then you speak to the arbiter. Exactly. Yes, well, I in any case, uh, Hans is looking at the position stood after up from F4. his chair and now that was the went out. line that we looked yes. at, Anastasia. Uh -huh. He didn't want it, to continue is it a the draw, game. Um, Christian, I mean, what do you the, think, the Mark? Line we looked yeah, at yeah, I'm very surprised. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't yes, know yes. what's Fabi going on. Fabi said about it a long time like ago, <laughs> guys. It's a draw. I don't <laughs> want even to calculate How anything here. How will it go? We were looking. King takes B2. F5. F5. Because we don't really interest in about this. B3. F6. So here you yes, see here, here is uh, the whole King. video. Yes. Oh, oh no! I As you can see, the the, the clock. It's Newman's turn to play. So and if you take it, let's do it very slow, actually. What? Whoa! The King. What? Uh. Yes, you can do it slowly. Yes, of yes. course. A bit too slow. Yes. <laughs> Takes the king. Seems to be looking at it. Yes. And takes the top off. So yeah, here... Um, the only thing that I could maybe think of is... Um, like maybe by and accident, he oh, and he broke the. <laughs> what do you think? Which uh, paragraph of the article oh at twelve point nine? He just broke the king. Exists what? here, Mark. I would suggest uh, the first one. Uh, give a warning and give the player yes. back the amount of time that the player has actually lost. Yes, twelve point nine point one. Yeah. Uh, we can uh, show the manual, uh, the, the arbiter's manual. About uh, the article for the audience, if it is easily to do that. 
Should be. Yes. So let's go to... And to uh, explain uh, the regulation here. Yes, of course. So he said Article 12, the role of the arbiter, 12.9. So here 12. we have... 12.9 is the role of a here. Yes, 12.9. Yes. So here I would, yes. we would, uh, I would like also give a warning. Yes. Like the arbiter did there. And now since the opponent already had like 35 minutes on the clock, you uh, increasing the time of the opponent, so on, is not like... Uh, let's say it wasn't crucial. Not really crucial. Yes. So, yeah, you could hear increase the time just because of the time that was lost. Yeah. Strange situation. Strange situation. Of course, you have to increase uh, the remaining time of the opponent because uh, the clock uh, still go went on. Yes, so as our audit says, we have yes. the player violated Article 11.3.1. Yes. And player punished according yes, to, to the Article 12.9. Yes. That's right. 11.3. Eleven point three point one things. Uh, no, sorry, it's not eleven point three point one. Why do I have eleven point three point one? It's not correct. So it's eleven point five. Yes. It's eleven point five. So, so 7.5 and article 11.5 it says it is forbidden to distract or annoy the opponent in any manner whatsoever this includes unreasonable claims unreasonable offers of a draw or the introduction of a source of noise into the playing area okay yes, yes the arbiter right. must always intervene when the opponent is disturbed or distracted so here then it says infraction of any part 11.6 infraction of any part of articles 11.1 to 11.5 shall lead to penalties in accordance with article 12.9 and then when we move to article 12.9 so and it says here these punishments are in approximate level of severity okay yes So it's very important that uh, we go through the warnings. First is a warning. Yes. So we come to our second uh, second topic, where we come on to the touchy topic about electronic devices. The devices. This is the same in eleven articles, of course. Yes. Uh, we are again uh, focusing on Article Eleven. So let's move to the Arbitrage Manual. This is now Article 11.3.2.1. During play, during a game, a player is forbidden to have any electronic device not specifically approved by the arbiter in the playing venue. In the venue, not in the playing hall. Venue okay. means the smoking area, the toilets. Yep. So, again, it goes into 3.3. The arbiter may require the player to allow his clothes, bags, other items, or body to be inspected by the arbiter or person authorized by the arbiter shall inspect the player. Of the, shall be of the same gender. If a player refuses to cooperate, the arbiter shall take measures in accordance to 12.9. And it goes on to say, the regulations about electronic devices are now very strict. It yes. doesn't matter when the mobile found this phone is found. The opponent cannot checkmate the funding player by any series of legal moves. He wins the game. The purpose is because the opponent may have cheated earlier. Okay? Yes, that's right. Uh, 
Okay, and of course it says that if a if an arbitral are now going to specify in advance, there might be a less severe penalty for a violation of this article. But because yes. this is a serious tournament, serious consequences for such violations. Yes. So we're going to look at a, a case that took place in the World Junior Championship. Caused a bit of a shockwave because it was very harsh. So, Priyanka Nutaki, top-rated Indian player at the World Junior Championships 2022 in the girls' section. So this was taking place between 11 and 23 October. Yes. Um, just right after she won her sixth round game, reaching a score of 5 out of 6. Her result was overturned and she was expelled from the tournament. So let's see what happened. So the game was played and after the game ended, as in these events, a random fair play check took place where they found earbuds in the jacket pocket. Yes. Now, as soon as the earbuds are found, this is electronic devices, which means the game is straight admit forfeited. So, regardless if there is suspicion of uh, of uh, cheating or not, this is straight away a violation of the federal laws of chess. Yes. So, unfortunately, the game is already straight away. Fortunately for the player, for the Indian player, the game was straight away. Uh, uh, declared the loss. Now, then the. But uh, this, the due to the fair play policies of the event and FIDE, the player was expelled from the tournament. So let's read the official report from FIDE. An unfortunate incident occurred towards the end of the sixth round of the Girls World Junior Championship in Sardinia. During a routine check, one of the players was found to have a pair of earbuds in her jacket pocket. While there is no indication of foul play, earbuds are strictly yes. forbidden at the playing hall. Carrying these devices during a game is a violation of fair play policy and it is penalized with the loss of the game and expulsion from the tournament. The point scored by Nutaki in the sixth round has been awarded to her rival Govha Beidulayeva. The Indian delegate filed an appeal, but the appeals committee reconfirmed the decision. So, the statement of the Indian uh, delegation was uh, in round six of World Juniors, uh, Nutari kept the earbuds in her jacket. She forgot to remove them before the tournament hall. She, as a son, she was removed from the tournament. As mentioned in the FIDE report, no indication of foul play. However, the decision was that she cannot be a part of the tournament anymore. It's very unfortunate, but we respect the decision and agree that everyone has to abide by the rules. So these are the coaches of India. And the statement by the player is the same thing again. Unfortunately, she forgot that she had it and she went into the venue with the earbuds. And despite no... Indic absolutely no indication on uh, on uh, cheating. This uh, just having the electronic device is a is a violation of the laws, which results in a ban, not in a ban, sorry, in a disqualification of the tournament. So yes, uh, so you lose the game plus removal of the tournament. Yeah. This is a very harsh uh, penalty that occur now for electronic yes. devices. And the problem is that despite all of this, the player even went through a metal detector. So you can see that uh, such things can happen. So yes. the best thing is not even to come to the playing venue with... The venue, device. not to the playing hall. Yes, yes, yes. to the venue. 
not to come with the devices. Like, you know, yes. you're going to take part in a chess game. Just keep everything electronically at your yes. home, also at your hotel. Yes, many organizers in the competitions. Uh, set some uh, specific rooms for a city control. Yes, or I know, but the point is like or, sometimes yes. these controls don't find it until it's too late. Yeah, of course. So it's best to leave them at home if you don't need them. Yeah. So going back to our PowerPoint. Yes. We have the violation of 11.3.2.1, which yes. is then punished by 11.3.2.2, plus with the fair play policies of the actual tournament. Yes. Tournament. So it's much higher the penalty. Also with Article 12.9. Uh, yes, 12.9 is straight away disqualification, but this is uh, covered in 11.3.2.2. Yes. Which says, uh, if it is evident that the player has such a device on the person in the playing venue, the player shall lose the game. The opponent yes. shall win. So it's very strong. And uh, according to some schedules, the competitions, uh, they reacted with the article 12.9.8 to quit from the tournament. Exclusion for one or yes, more yes, rounds. This is according to tournament regulations, yes. Yes. According to the schedule of the competition, yes. So then we're going to our third case, which is actually a interesting case. The yes. use of notes. Of course. Um, books or uh, handbooks and books, notebooks, yes. Chess books, uh, bulletins, chess bulletins. Yes. Chess bulletins was a popular thing of the past. Notebooks, score sheets, extra score sheets. Uh, I remember when we were playing in the Cyprus Open Championship in 2005-2006. We had the, we got every second round a nice uh, a nice bulletin with the games inside and while we were playing and board we would usually read the read the the bulletin. <laughs> yes. <laughs> in many tournaments, Mark. In many tournaments. Yes. No, I uh, I never thought of using the bulletin to find moves. Of my yes. Own. But unfortunately, this is now the case. So this is like banned. Always, yes. you always have to think of the bad case. So in this case that the player sent me, there is a bookstore which has many tournaments of bookstores. And while the player goes to the bathroom, he has to pass the bookstore. Yes. So on the way to the bathroom, the player passes the bookstore. And buy some books. The player bought some books and went to the bathroom. So now the question is what are you going to punish the player with? For having books and going to the bathroom with the books. And this is where. Not only the bathroom with the books, something that's com very complicated. Yes, it's just Maybe like... Maybe to have two books, one inside the other one. Yeah, the problem is just having books. Uh, mm -hmm. First of all, I think the main problem is why is a player at the bookstore in the first place? Player should not have... The player left basically the venue, the play. This is the alternative cheating, not from electronic devices, yes. but with... Uh, but yes. many times this is by accident. So a player yes. leaves the playing area by accident, not realizing they're not allowed to go. That's so right. You use Article 12.9 as a basis for punishment. For punishment, yes. Uh, the role of arbiter is according to yeah. the Article 12.9 to player's behavior. Yes. And I agree with, uh, with the arbiter at the venue that did not ex disqualify the player because I think it's very harsh to disqualify yes. a player for just leaving the venue. 
especially when the I would say part of the blame lies on the organizers for not controlling this, yes. Well, Mark, I don't know how you feel about this. Let's say you don't really check very well where the players go. Isn't it part of your part of the organizers? Like you can't yes. blame always the players, yes. So yes, uh, this is one thing, and then we have the player using the notes, which is actually the violation of Article Eleven Point Three Point One, and gets punished with Article Twelve Point Nine. So we should always start with the easy, with the warning. Always with the warning. Always. It's the first one. It's about easy. And um, unless we suspect the file cheating, to say okay. This okay is unless we suspect cheating, let's say the player played the opening according to the book. Yes. Let's say the board, the board position is a London opening, and the player has a book on the London. That is clear cheating, so we the player will be punished severely because of the severity of the matter. But yes, of the player just right. going to the shop, although it's against the laws of chess. And here, let's say if he does it the next round, you can punish with loss of game. Why? Because you've already warned them about it. Do you agree? Yes, of course. Because uh, even though it's two different games, I think the violation, this that certain violation, does carry on from game to game. We're not talking about illegal moves. We're talking about uh, going to the knowingly leaving the venue. If a player does it once, you can understand it's a mistake. Yes. Warning. Second time, it's not more mistake. It becomes something that you did it on purpose. So, should be punished with more severity. And this is what I like about the laws of chess. It gives a lot of flexibility to the arbiters to try to... Arbiters should know when, what severity to punish by. Do we have any other questions from the audience today? Yes, is there any question from the audience? Something they want to discuss about? Because otherwise, we yeah, it's been a very it's a very short episode today. Uh, it doesn't we yeah no questions uh Maki, so yes so i think uh, yeah it's going it's like a very very short stream just half an hour today yes it was a specific uh, yeah it was like but we are going uh, we have to inform the audience tonight that in our uh, future episodes we will have uh, two interviews from it will be a little surprise Yes, we have... Uh, With uh, special guests. Yep. And we are about to announce that. As it was a very small stream today. Thank yes. you everyone for watching. Thank you everyone. Thanks for watching and for the support. We we'll have uh, good material, good stuff for arbiters, uh, uh, lectures and topics. And uh, very useful uh, for seminars and uh, for their competitions so keep in touch stay tuned stay tuned and, and see you next wednesday next wednesday thanks to all of you